It's time to talk about what's going on in America. It's time to talk about what's going on in the workforce and in the homes of the American middle class. It's time to talk about the status and the future of today's economy. It's time to talk labor with your host, Jerry Williams Sr. Well, hello, Chicago. Hello, Talk Labor fans and uh, Star Planet TV fans. We're back. We're back today, and we got a lot of things to talk about. We got some, some, some very significant things that you're going to want to hear today. But as I say to you all the time, keep your head above the sand. If you put your head under the sand, you'll not know what's going on, and you will be devoured. So you got to stand up. And uh, just make sure you take care of what you need to take care of. Voting is the key. Voting is the key. So you got to get out there and vote. You got to make sure that your voice is heard. Now, I got a special guest with me today. And uh, I'll introduce him to you in a second. I think you're going to enjoy this young man as we come forth with you. But we got some things that we want to talk about. One of the key things that's going on right now and it's very important is the election of union officers at ATU Local 241. ATU Local 241 represent the bus operators and maintenance people and just about everything at CTA except the rapid transit. And uh, we're going to do one thing that uh, we do and you know, this year we're going to give an endorsement and uh, something we don't normally do, but this is uh, an endorsement that uh, not necessarily the station's endorsement, but it is talk labor's endorsement. And it's something that you really need to hear. But before we do that, let me introduce my guest tonight, Brother Ronald Roach. Ronnie. Hey, Jerry. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. So, this is a very um, astute labor person himself. But uh, what I want to do, we're going to give you what our endorsements are. And the reason why we're going to do that is because you got to understand where you're at right now. With Donald Trump in, in um, the office of the White House and these crazy people are trying to do the things that they, they are doing now, they can have you so confused until you could possibly do the wrong thing. And you don't want to put a Donald Trump in your White House at ATU 241. And the uh, reason why I say that is, and I'm going to only talk about the top officers at uh, AT Local 241. You got to make the decision about the other individuals yourself. I wrote a book about this. I tried to tell people, don't, whatever you do, don't elect people because they're your friends. <laughs> you got to elect people because of their ability to get things done. And one of the reasons, uh, you're going to see as we go further in tonight what I mean about you don't elect people because they're your friends. I have a perfect example of that. But uh, I'm going to get uh, comments from my friend Ronald Roach as we go. But let me do this. I'm going to move on down, and we're going to talk about who we endorse at AT Local 241. You have four people running for that uh, position. And... Uh, of president, and uh, our endorsement will be the current president that you have. Our reason for saying that you need to reelect the president you have because of the work that this man has done since he's been in there. I'm a former president myself. I was the longest serving president at AT Euro for 308. I'm retired now, been retired for 11 years. But what I say to you is, you got to think about where you come from and what's been happening over the last 20 years. The last 15 to 20 years, you've lost so much. Some of the things you don't even know you even had have been given away. It wasn't as a result of this man. This man came in and started putting plugs in the holes. When he came in, you didn't have a place to stay. 241 was, was paying 
fourteen. I think it's fourteen thousand dollars a month for rent in an office downtown. But then the person, people that owned the building, told two forty one that they had to get out. That's before your current president was elected. Once he came in and found out that was happening, this guy not only got out and found a place for ATU Local 241, he bought their own building. Believe me, that's not an easy task. But on top of buying their own building, instead of paying $14,000 a month, they only paying something like $9,000 a month to own the building. When he came in, I understand that your treasury was at $600,000. You're talking about six to six to 9,000 members. You're in deep in the red. Now I'm understanding your, your treasury is well over $1.3 million. This is the kind of stuff that the guy has done. And getting people back to work and working with legislators to get things done for the local. As a matter of fact, he just met with the alderman in, in, city, in the city hall and uh, talking about some of the things that's going on with the CTA, what's going, you know, some of the things that's happening mainly because, let's face it, you've got some racial problems there. Well, the aldermen, and I think the Black Caucus and the aldermen, not only are working with, they're going to file a lawsuit for AT Local 240 because this guy works with them, works with other labor leaders like Karen Lewis from the Teachers Union, uh, gets out and uh, work with the members, put the, get the members involved, uh, and, you know, have members, you know, come in and be uh, abreast of everything that's going on. Transparency is what you need. This is what's going on. So the guy's been doing a great job. You all know that. Most of the people do know that. But uh, this is why we endorse them because you can't have, my thing is this, when people used to come to me about, you know, can you help out with these guys? And when I go and try to help out and I find out most of them are nuts. So I walk away because I can't, I don't have time for that. I walk away. I found one guy that's really a labor leader, a labor person. That was this guy here, Tommy Sam. So I said, okay, I'll be, anytime you call me, I'll be happy to give you my information. And I try to stay away from getting in front of the union person. I don't try to run to your office. I don't do it. Whenever I'm called, I'll give any information that you need that I have. That's what's happening with this guy. So he's been working, his members, he's gotten his members back together. He's gotten respect again. Uh, Local 241 has respect again. They, they, they fear this, this, this young man, so that's why we're supporting him. You got three other people running. You got one guy, he's one of the guys that's running, was a former officer. He's the reason you're in the shape you're in right now. He gave you the health care trust, which you should not be paying because when we filed this lawsuit, all the other agencies around the state of Illinois filed a lawsuit, they won their lawsuit. We filed our lawsuit, we won half of it, the part with the pensioners, but the part with the active members, the union signed it away. And this brother was working with them at that time and was promoting that. I know that because I was a part, I, I talked with them at that time, it was eight years ago. That's the guy that wants to get back in there again. Then you have another guy that's a career uh, 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 person that runs for office, Never ever, he says he has a thousand uh, degrees and stuff like that. Nobody's ever seen him. Then you have another young lady that uh, prior to being elected to office had never even come to a union meeting before. Had never come to a union meeting before. And when I tell you, you cannot put your friends and, your, and people in there that you know are not qualified. This young lady happened to be the daughter of one of my best friends, my childhood friends. And, you know, it got to a point where when it was brought to me, I said, no, I can't do that because you're not really representing the people. I had, a, you know, my friend, we had a little disagreement. And we uh, figure he'll get over it. If he don't, we just move on. But I cannot justify putting somebody in there that knows nothing about being a union representative talking about president. Then I'm going to give you now and this is talk labor. This is our opinion here. I'm going to give you who I think should, uh, uh, who we would like to endorse for the Office of Financial 
recording secretary. And that would be Toy Bowers. Toy Bowers has the knowledge. She has experience. As a matter of fact, she was a, uh, she's worked as a financial secretary. She was assistant financial secretary. She's also a board member. And uh, she works with 241 all the time. You give, you give her a call, she'll get the job done for you. And they know that. They know that. I remember her working for me as, a, as a, uh, uh, an assistant board member. I put her in charge of Cedric. I don't know if you all remember that. It's the worst insurance you could ever have. But I put her in charge of it when Cedric, there was a problem with a member. If all they had to do was say, well, I'm going to get uh, Tory Bowers, Cedric straightens up because they knew she knew, she knew what she was doing. And you gotta have people in there that know the job, <clears throat> really know the job. You can't put people in there and uh, hope that they can do the job. And if people are frank with you and you talk to them, they're gonna let you know that Toy Bowles is the only person in this race, out of the four people that's running, that actually know the job. So our suggestion is that uh, you vote for uh, Ms. Toy Bowles. And any, any questions you have about that, you can always give me a call. I don't mind Give me a call because that's what politics are about. But I just want to give you the fact. We, you cannot, you cannot sit back and play games with your livelihood. You got a contract coming up right now. See, Taylor, love to see you guys split it and come back and bring some new. And, you know, it, it would kill you. You used to have a lot of things <laughs> that you've given up now. I understand that you gave up the uh, four, four hour, uh, I'm not gonna have Ronald Roach talk about this. You gave up uh, parts of your overtime. We fought hard to make sure you had that. They tell me that you gave that up. I know you gave up some of your seniority when it comes to, if you're laid off when you come back to work. You've, got, you've given up uh, parts of your no layoff clause. You've given up a whole lot of things that you should not be giving up, but when you have people in there that don't know, the company takes total advantage of them. They take total advantage of them. So you got to stand up and you got to make sure that you put the right people in there. And in our opinion, it is President Tommy Sam, Financial Secretary Toy Bowers. Now, that's from Talk Labor, and we want to discuss that. Ronnie, do you have any uh, thing that you want to say about? Yeah, you have to understand all the progress that you've made thus far, if you change over, you're gonna lose all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, because you, 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 you're starting all over, and they know who they can, what they can and cannot do. You know, uh, there's been cases where they had two contracts already made out, already sitting there. If the smart man, if the one intelligent man that gets in, then they know this contract he's going to deal. But if they got a, the one that's not smart, they got a contract for him. Mm -hmm. you, know, oh, that's true. you know, I recall a young lady, a gentleman was president of a local, and he had stopped CTA from taking $42 million back from his people. Mm -hmm. He told me, I ain't going to pay it. We don't owe it. <laughs> and the young lady says, if he's smart enough to stop them from collecting $42 million, y'all shouldn't vote him out of office. Yeah. yeah. But, but you know what they did? Mm -hmm. They voted him out. And, and did, they, did they come to get that? Wasn't money? on a month and a half after the new president took office. They got the money. They, $42 million. $42 million. They asked her for it and she gave it to them. Didn't even put up a fight. Now, folks, that's a fact. It's a fact. I know that's a fact. <laughs> can be proven. And everything that I tell you, I can prove it to you. I'm not going to tell you things mm -hmm. that you can't, that you can't uh, uh, look up for yourself. If you go and look at the ruling from the Illinois Supreme Court in regards to the uh, health care bill that was passed at Springfield, you're going to find that the Illinois Supreme Court said that the reason why they ruled against us and nobody else in the state Nobody else in the state, they rule against CTA pension, not pensioners, but CTA employees is because the union signed off signed on it. Signed off Am on I it. correct? Yes, you are right. Go they got it in black and white. Look in it, the, the ruling, you'll see it for yourself. I have it. And people ask, why 
did they rule in favor of the retirees? The only reason they rule in favor of the retirees is because the union don't represent the retirees. Thank God. Because had the union represented retirees, we would have lost to Yes, you would have. So that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. And what happened is I see one of the guys that's in there that's running right now actually fought us. That's why you are paying health care trust now. Today. Coming out of your check. You should not be paying that. Ask yourself, where is that money going? What are they going to do with it? You see, when they take that money out of your check, you're not going to see it. They say when you retire. Well, when you retire, you're going to get what? Medicare. So the money you're putting up now, where is it going? That's what they were doing to us, Ronnie. Okay. Now, when the rules change, you have to be 64 and have at least 25 years mm -hmm. on the job to retire. Okay. Let's just say your grandbaby comes in at 21. That's 43 years she'll have to work at an average of three, four thousand, who knows, on an average of three thousand a year. What are they paying now? Uh -huh. Three thousand plus. Yeah. Okay, now she retires after 43 years. Medicare kicks in the next year. Unless she have a double heart transplant and a high transplant, you can't get it. How you gonna, you can only, you can only benefit one year. And if something happens to her, after 41 years, let's say something happens and she dies. Don't the, your, her family don't get that money. Right. You know. And that's one of the things that, 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 that I, I, I suggest to people like yourselves, ATU 241 and ATU Local 308. You're both saddled with that. Both 308 and 241 signed off on that. Yes, they did. So your members are saddled with that. Now, what I'm saying to you is that money that they're taking out on you now for health care trust, in the future, you should be, and in, in the very new, near future, you should be negotiating with the CTA. Just tell them this. I don't need you to... Uh, purchase insurance for me when I retire. The money you're taking out, continue to take it out. But that money, we will invest. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if you invest that money that you're taking out, and you go to an economist and they'll tell you this. If you invest that money that they're taking out on you, you'll get $1.4 million when you get ready to retire in that length of time. Go to an economist and have them to write it out for you. Tell them how much you put, you're taking, they're taking out on you every year. It's 3,000 plus, 3,000 if you only work at 20, 80 hours. Mm -hmm. You guys that are working more than that, there's more mm -hmm. money. Oh, yeah. So these are the things that you're gonna do. But if you got people in there, like, say for instance, the guy you had in there before, he don't understand that. And they don't understand that, and they have no clue, and they only go about what people tell them. And, you know, they were telling us that, well, you guys are going to have to pay. Why you guys feel you retirees think you ain't supposed to pay? Let me tell the brother why we feel we didn't have to pay. Because we put our money up long before, probably before you were born. That's right. We put that money up so that when we retire, we wouldn't have to pay. That's why we feel we don't have to pay. And you know who agrees with us? The Illinois Supreme Court. Thank God they did, because you would have given it up. You would have made us pay even more. Now, the money that they, they took from us, they're going to have to give it back to us. And I understand that that money is reaching up somewhere around $200 million right now that they took out of the retirees. I can't even imagine what they took from the, from the active members, but from the, what they took from the retirees. And, you know, so when you got people in there like that that don't know and won't listen, you get young people and you got... Three people that's running for office have no clue. Now, the president you have now, now, not only did he fight for the active members to fight to stop that, stop them from taking the money out on you, he also fought with the retirees to make sure yes, that did. that happened. And he's still fighting, and he's still susceptible to reaching out to try to get that money back somehow that they're taking out on you, right? I'd like to add something to that, and the fact that he's the only person in 241 Let's understand, if he hadn't came on board with us, not a retiree in 241 would be getting a dime. They'd have froze him out. 
We looked for somebody for, if you recall, mm -hmm. we, we searched for, we asked, we begged for two years for somebody in 241 and the sister local to come in with us. Sure did. They told us, we don't want to be bothered, ain't nothing with that. And he, ha and he heard about it. And when we come to, he said, man, I've been looking for y'all. Understand, people, if the, pre the president that you have today, if he hadn't decided to come in and help us fight this lawsuit, y'all wouldn't be getting a dime. Right. And you got stuff right now that they're trying to take away from you. I want to add a little caveat to what you were saying. Okay. Now, what we're doing right now, we put a coalition together uh, so because, according to the law, a retiree should be sitting on that pitching board. That's right. And we've been, we, we talked about this coalition for eight years. Nobody moved on it. So finally, I got some people together and they moved on it. And I, got a, I want to give a shout out to Brother Claude Funches, who's the president right. of the coalition. And Brother Ronald Roach is, is a member, uh, is on, on the board. Of, and Suzette Smith and John, all you guys that's, that's on that board and the members of the coalition. Now, when we filed that lawsuit, we had people that, that ran from us on 308 and 241. Yes, they oh, did. Oh, Lord, you got to know what they're doing. I want to mess with that. And in 241, we couldn't get anybody to sign until we found Tommy Sams. He came along, not only, not only did he sign, he fought with us. Right now with the coalition, I was at a pensioner's breakfast. Brother Funches came over to me, president of the coalition. He said, Jerry, here's a young lady over here telling people not to sign up for the coalition because, oh, the world's going to come to an end and you can't get out of it, which is a lie. You know, you can't get out. All you do doing is being a member to let these people know you're not going to sit back and let them take your pension away from you. So she was actually swearing up and down that, you know, you shouldn't join the coalition. Now, this is a person that just retired, okay, and really don't know what the heck is going on. So I went down and explained to the, to the uh, brother what was going on, and he signed it. He signed the, he signed the uh, uh, petition along with a lot of other people. And the more people we have to sign that petition, the stronger we are when we go to CTA and demand that a pensioner that we select sit on that board and be a member of the board. But it was just the idea, I was, this is the first time I saw that with this, with the coalition, I saw it with the lawsuit right. and we won, we came back and won that. You know, it, but with the Coalition, here's people that's supposed to be, we're fighting for you, mm -hmm. and you're trying to knock us down. What? Ronnie, explain that to me, because, you know, you, you, you hang out. That's smart. You give me too <laughs> you much hang credit. Out, brother. I don't, you know. But you have to, the same thing with the lawsuit. They fought us, Mr. Ke I'll tell it, Mr. Kelly spent over $300,000 of your money fighting against the lawsuit. You told me that. He, he said it in the union yeah, meeting. Yeah, yes. Now he, and, and the lady, one of his board members, she was bragging about it. Man, we got the lawsuit thrown out. I said, well, don't you realize you, you talking about yourself? Right. Now she's retired. <laughs> can't get no insurance. No insurance. She can't get no insurance. And you know, because of the way she retired, she got caught up in the thing where she can't really get the insurance. Right. Everybody else can, but she right. can't really get the insurance. And she actually had the nerve to come to me and ask me, you know, Jerry, how can I, when you fought us? You tooth and nail. Uh, you know, I, I, I would like to help you, but you've got to go find somebody to help you. Mm -hmm. But anyway, those are the things that happen. And uh, sometimes we just get to fighting ourselves. And, you know, the best way people control you is by saying it's us against them. It's us against them. Now, when it comes to... ATU, it's all us. It's all of us. That's right. It's all us. It's not a us against them. Don't let nobody tell you that. Because that's the way they keep control. When people don't have the fortitude to be a good union rep, they'll try to scare you into thinking mm -hmm. it's us against them. Like this guy, the orange fella in the, in the White House. Mm -hmm. It's always us against them. Those Mexicans, they're going to do this. And those, those are, are Muslims, they're going to kill you. And those blacks, they shoot up, they kill each other in Chicago, and black on black crime. You got black on black crime, white on white crime, and all other kind of crime. So let's you know, stay away from that. But anyway, 
So that's who we're endorsing because they have the experience. They are not afraid to stand up in, in, in front of people and, and I'm, I mean the people that make a difference to tell them what time of the day it is. That's right. So that's what we love about these guys, that uh, they are, you know, I think some of the strongest people that I've seen, I'm not, I don't think I know for a fact, some of the strongest people I've seen in the last 20 years when it comes to labor with the ATU. Right. With the ATU. Yes. You've had a lot more. You've had a lot more. But, uh, you know, but in the ATU, these are the strongest guys that I've seen so in a far. long in a long time. <laughs> you know, and oh, I'm sorry, Ronnie. Go and, ahead. And, and and see, they're qualified. They're qualified. It's not the fact that we're not voting for him because we like him. You're voting for him because he's the best qualified. Right. He know both of them, Tommy and Toy Bowers. They are the best qualified for the job. Oh man! So you know what we got to do? We got to do this. Um, and the election is uh, March 14th, and it's going to be at the terminals. And you should know how you vote. Pensioners, you can vote at any terminal. This is pensioners. You can vote at any terminal. They may say, well, I want you to file a challenge vote. Go ahead and take, take the vote. File the challenge vote. Make sure they put it in the envelope and seal it up and put it in the box. Watch them do that. Your vote will be counted. So pensioners, you can vote anywhere. Okay? So don't, 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 uh, don't be afraid to go out there and take that vote like you should. Mm -hmm. uh, because we got so much stuff going on here. We, we want to make sure that uh, you, know, you understand that if you don't vote correctly now, you know, you'll pay for it in the end. You'll pay for it in the end. It's just so much you lost. Uh, with Local 308, they lost much more than, uh, and 241 lost, lost a lot. But, uh, but um, you know, and, and, and they lost a lot. But 308, we lost a lot at 308 and even more. But thank God, and, and I'm going to pat myself and my team on the back when we did negotiate that contract in 2001, because had we not negotiated it when we did, you would not be getting the pay that you're getting right now. We negotiated right before those planes ran into the September building, 11. right? Yeah. And we, you wouldn't be getting the pension that you got, that you're getting so far now. So, so uh, we just saying to you, whatever you do, get out there and vote and make sure, make sure that you, uh, that you, Put the right people in there. And I'm saying to you, Tommy Sams, I think Ronnie Roach is saying the same thing. And then That's Toy right. Bowers. That's right. Toy Bowers is one of the smartest young ladies that you want to see. And she cares. She cares about that membership. She go 10 extra miles. So with Tom Sam. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go to a commercial right now. And we're going to come back. we got some good, juicy stuff for you. you got to see it. We'll be right back. They would say, they say, I thought. I knew there was something wrong when I saw the police officer creeping up beside me, but I couldn't think of nothing that I had did. So, you know, I, and, and as I continue to walk, and I see and them like, beside me. We don't smoke marijuana. Like, like, so the police are thinking we criminals, and that's not true. It's wrong to judge anybody by their skin tone. Because you're a police officer, it doesn't mean you can abuse anybody you want. I just thank my God, you know, how long can this continue? I knew there was something wrong when I saw the police officer creeping up beside me, but I couldn't think of nothing that I had did. So, you know, I, and, and as I continued...
smell marijuana. And I'm like, we don't smoke marijuana. Police are thinking we criminals, and that's not true. It's wrong to judge anybody by their skin tone. Because you're a police officer, it doesn't mean you can abuse anybody you want. Thank my God, you know, how long can this continue? I knew there was something wrong when I saw the police officer creeping up beside me, but I couldn't think of nothing that I had did. So, you know, I, and as I continue to walk, and I see them creeping beside me. We don't smoke marijuana. Police are thinking we criminals, and that's not true. It's wrong to judge anybody by their skin tone. Because you're a police officer, it doesn't mean you can abuse anybody you want. Thank my God, you know, how long can this continue? I knew there was something wrong when I saw the police officer creeping up beside me, but I couldn't think of nothing that I had did. So, you know, I, I, and as I continue to walk, and I see them creeping beside me. We don't smoke marijuana. Police are thinking we criminals, and that's not true. It's wrong to judge anybody by their skin tone. Because you're a police officer, it doesn't mean you can abuse anybody you want. Thank my God, you know, how long can this continue? I knew there was something wrong when I saw the police officer creeping up beside me, but I couldn't think of nothing that I had did. So, you know, I... All right. All right, we're back. My brother said he couldn't think of nothing he did. Stayed on TV too long. <laughs> but uh, what we want to do, you know, we, we, we were talking about some of the things that we're going to do and... Uh, 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 in the next segment, we're going to talk about we're going to be talking about uh, hate crimes, some of the things that people are doing, uh, the, just the transgender situation. We're going to be talking about uh, something that's very pertinent to people. So, what we're going to do, I, I, I think that uh, I think that uh, the politics, the politics, is more important than anything. Ronnie, I think that the politics are more important than anything. It's either that or a revolutionary war. Right. So one of the things we've been very fortunate about here in this country is that uh, we did transfer power peacefully, with the exception of the Civil War. What these guys are trying to do now is get it back to where we have to you know, have a civil war. Um, they don't know the consequences of their actions. You know, they don't know the consequences of their actions. They think that, oh, we could go, we're gonna, we got all the guns, we're gonna kill all, that don't work, kill all these people. It don't work like that. Because when you kill, you, you, you can be killed, and you will be killed. So we wanna stay away from that. We got ways of, um, we got ways of changing. We got ways of changing that. And uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to stay with the politics because politicians are what make this country work. But we got to understand that we run it. We own it. We have to make the politicians realize that what? They work for us. Young man got a song out. And I'm going to see if I can't get it on my show every day. It's called New Politician. Young man by the name of T.L. Williams. This song is just blasting all over every radio station. New Politician. I hope I can see that, hear that song right about now. New Politician. Why do we suffer at the hands of these politicians? Don't you know politicians work for you? Hey. You're the boss. One day, cause now you're real. Okay. But 
You've been boycotting your own people for 25 years Well that's a heck of a head start Thinking of a master plan when they're already paid in full Representatives my runner Congressman's my concubine the Governor is my gopher And the mayor is my mate Cause I'm mad I don't debate for second place Look at me, I'm the captain now I'm the leader of this whole ship I make the law I'm Robert Smalls What you heard? And keep that underneath your seat Make sure politicians frequently Come to your streets and see her They only near to campaign When we got beef with policia Squeaky wheel get the WD for dear Brother and sister I will tell you no mentira I hope you get the picture and photographia Make sure you vote in local elections And not in fear It's an uphill electoral college Conquest, pros and cons, yes You can protest without contest It's ironic that the opposite of progress Is congress Semantics mattering, candor chattering Peep the pandering pattern Uh oh, I put one more syllable on that again Keep in mind, redesign, redefine Keep in line the rules Based on what we decline and do What you heard, baby, I'm a politician Nothing happens until you step up and take control. Yeah! It's there for you. This is your country. You don't let nobody, nobody tell you what you can and can't do. Like I said before, they work for you. What you heard, baby? I'm a politician. Ooh. I don't follow leaders. Who ain't got no vision. What a powerful song. Politician, new politician. You know, T.L. Williams, hey man, thank you for that. That is a great song. Hey Ronnie, you know what? These politicians don't realize that they work for us, do they? They don't, they don't think so. Yes, especially the guys in the White House. They, they, mm -hmm. put, they put um, all kinds of conglomerates in there, <laughs> you know, hate and racism, and, you know. So uh, I, I fear this is going to happen one day. People are going to go to sleep and get caught sleep, and they were going to sneak right in, and that's what they did. That's what happened. So, and they want to, they're going to try to do everything they can before you can wake up, and, you know. And, you know, the funny thing about it, all these people that call themselves voting for Trump, you know, I, I voted for Trump because, and I'm not listening to him, but I voted for you. I, I didn't look for you to take away my health care. And then you're talking about taking away my social security. Mm, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, well, you know, this is what they, you, you put in there. We tried to tell you. You know, you so hung up on that us against them, black against white, brown against you, know, until they, they just suck at you. They suck at you. But I'm not going to rub it in. It's time for us to get together and kick some butt. Black, white, brown, all of us. Get, some together, get together and kick some butt. You remember the French Renaissance? Renaissance? Mm -hmm. Chop people's heads off. I'm not saying mm -hmm. go out and chop popping people's heads off. Now. I'm not well. saying that. But that's what they did back then. With rich people, they just got sick of them. And they just chop, chop, chop. Now, I'm not saying do that. But we can chop their pockets off and take that money from them. Coke brothers and all those guys. Hey, listen, you know what? And what happens when I, we talk about the uh, 
uh, hate crimes and stuff like that in, in, in the city, in, in this country, it didn't, it was bubbling all the time. And this guy came and just, you know, turned the fire up. Yes, he did. And these guys, are dead. now they feel like, oh, I can just kill you because get out of my country. Ah. Get out of my country. You know, I was like, I tell you what, look, we we got a we got a clip on the hate crime. Take a look at what happened in Kansas. Take a look at what happened in Kansas. The Hindu American Foundation tonight is calling on the Justice Department to investigate as a hate crime the deadly shooting this week inside a bar in Kansas. Dean Reynolds is there. You down gunshot wounds to the chest. I've got a third with a wound to the hip. Patrons told Kansas police Wednesday night a man had yelled, get out of my country at two customers before opening fire and fleeing the scene. It looks like white male with a scarf on his neck um, and medals on his chest. Five hours later and 70 miles away in Missouri, police arrested a suspect, 51-year-old Adam Purinton. Police said Purinton had allegedly disclosed to a bartender that he'd shot two Middle Eastern men. But they weren't Middle Eastern. They were Indian Hindus here on work visas for jobs in high tech. 32-year-old Srinivas Kujabotla was killed and 32-year-old Alok Modasani was wounded. A third man, 24-year-old Ian Grillet of Grandview, Missouri, was also shot after he tried to intervene. I was just doing what anyone should have done for another human being. It's not, it's not about where he's from or his ethnicity. We're all humans. Kuji Botla will be buried in India, where his family was shocked and directed some anger at President Trump, as did Indian news media. But at the White House, Press Secretary Sean Spicer said any attempt to connect the president's rhetoric on immigrants to the tragedy in Kansas would be absurd. Now, the suspect was moved here to Kansas earlier today and is now in jail on murder charges. Authorities haven't decided yet whether to charge him with hate crimes as well, Scott. His first court appearance will be here on Monday. Dean Reynolds, thanks. Now, when you got an old guy like, an uh, old guy like uh, Donald Trump, 70 years old, acting like he's an eighth grader, in, <laughs> in eighth grade like a bully, running around trying to pick on little people, smaller people. You saw that in Kansas, and you saw what's going on. Another gentleman was shot and, you know, and killed, and they were turning over gravestones uh, for the Jewish people. And, you know, this is what this guy has. And people need to just step up and say it and stop trying to be cute. You know, oh, well, you know, he didn't mean this. To hell with that. We know what time of the day it is, and especially the media. Ronnie, what do you think about the media's position on this? Well, they, all they're trying to do is sell newspapers. Uh -huh. They promote garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He meant, he meant what he did. He knew what he did, and he meant it. You know, he meant it. You, you, you're absolutely right. He meant it, but he got. But you know, they got to step up and say it. If you don't step up and say it, you're asking for it. That's right. You know, you've been through history. We've seen this before. Some of the younger people have it, and young people, believe me, step up. Don't let them do it to you. That's what I tell people at ATU. Don't let them do it to you. Step up. Don't let it happen because it's it's, it's up to you. It's up to you. Um, I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this. We're going to talk about something I think is really, really weird. I, uh, I got a, a story with this young kid. We're going to change this subject totally and move on okay. because we want to try to, I want to try to get to something that happened um, that people don't know about. But uh, I, got, I watched this kid, and people were telling me about this little kid. He's a kid wrestler, man. He's a little wrestler. <laughs> you got to see it to believe it. Uh, this little kid, they call him the beast, the beast. And I'm like, hell, he would scare me and he ain't no more than about six, <laughs> you know, but he's one hell of a little wrestler, man. And uh, I'll tell you what, can we run that clip with this, this kid wrestler? Cause this my life be like, uh, yeah. My life be like,
stranded Low key and stand candid Reflect on all the things I try my hand at Search for the equation to persuasions I'm used to Find a comfort in the zones of class of bones I can lose to A mountain is spontane Spinning in monsoon and grinning this high octane This blows about how I came Rolling down the hills cause life's a hassle Encircled by my folly like a moat Surround the castle, stay afloat Catch a second wind, then if the air I breathe Teary eyed nose running, wipe the snout on my sleeve I'm calling on the savior to be all that I need Please forgive me, my behavior had me lost in life's speed What do you think about it? Ah, <laughs> great athlete, six. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. That was funny, you know. But you know, I I see that, and I think it's cute. It I is. think it's cute. You know, they all had protection on, and it's wrestling, and it's fun, and this is something we we do. You know, it's something we do. You were talking to me about um, a young man went to jail. Uh huh. For tell me what happened on that, you know. Um, a young man, he, um, young lady, OD from drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, her boyfriend, they, I think she lived in Algonquin. Mm -hmm. They went to Zion. Her boyfriend took her over to Zion to buy some dope. Right. Now he took her to the dope house. Mm -hmm. He takes her to buy the dope. They go get the dope, Zion go back, they, she, he said they got high, shot dope all day. She OD'd later on that evening. Okay. They charged the young man that sold him the dope with, with, uh, uh, with in, drug induced homicide. Okay. He got 28 years. 28 years. In McHenry County, there were no blacks on the jury. He's a black guy. Uh huh. Took less than two I hours to him, to took less question. than two hours to convict him. Now the boyfriend took her to the dope house. Right. He bought the dope. The boyfriend. And get and he go go back home, but he got probation. Wow. wow. He was not black. No. See. And she wasn't black. And and I'm glad you brought that up because now here we are in Chicago, and you got uh, Commissioner Johnson, right? Police Commissioner Johnson going down to Springfield and belly aching and whining about the guns and the guns should be taken off the street. Uh, you know, and the second, second offender should get more time. You know, if it applies to everybody in the state, then okay, it's all right. But it reminds me of what they did with crack cocaine uh -huh. and cocaine uh -huh. and stop and frisk. It only applies to certain people. Certain people mean the black and Hispanics and people like that. If you're going to do it, do it for everybody. You know, if you come talking that gun stuff, do it for everybody. Now, one alderman said the guns are a problem, but the biggest problem is what are you all doing about the dope that's coming into the, the, the neighborhoods? Mm -hmm. That's why the gun people are shooting and killing. 
And I think she made more sense than anybody else. What about the school? Mm -hmm. What about doing some things, making sure they get to school? Uh, you know, and I, and, and, and let me say this, and then, and then I'll, okay. uh, one, one person, my producer, was telling me, you know, okay, because <laughs> I told her, I said, we know Johnson is trying, you know. He's trying to do what best he can do. She said, okay, what about your boy now, <laughs> Johnson? Well, you know what, Johnson, you know, uh, it's good. I understand you go down there and you're trying to get some things done. But we got to be very careful on how we do things. We don't want to get down there. Well, they're killing everybody, so just do anything to them. I don't care. The hell with the laws and the Constitution. Right? The, what do you think about that? That's the trick. What do you think about you that? You know, let's understand something here. Gun control, you took, I heard you make a statement a couple of weeks ago that our kids make up, Chicago kids right. make up 20% of all the kids in the state of Illinois, right. but they only get 15% of the money. Thank you. Thank now, you. that 5%, that, 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 that 5%, that, 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 five, five percent oh, yeah. that they take, is, that's $500 million a year. That's... And, and what, in five and a half years, that's $2.5 billion yeah. that you've taken out of it that, that should be here? Right. If, remember, we had social center. We had social programs. We had bands. Sure did. We had crafts and to teach kids things. And we had free college. Free, free college. You know, free city college. We didn't yeah. pay anything no. to go to college. But you take $500 million and give it to downstate. That's exactly right. What you know? So what do you expect? You take away something, but you don't put anything in its place. That's, that's a for instance, like the Illinois State Constitution says, you cannot take away anything that they earn except that you replace it with something it, of equal value. Of, of, of equal value, oh. Section Eight, Paragraph Five. So you take away five hundred million dollars away from me, and you don't give me anything. What do you expect? You close down 50 schools, and you can't tell me that the mayor and the governor and all of them they don't know about this. Right, right. So why wasn't anything done? What do you expect? Right. And then they go down and make you feel like, well, the problem really is we got to put these kids, boy, these people, not kids, these people in jail. My thing is, if somebody shoots somebody, they should go under the jail. That's don't get right. Me wrong. I agree. You should be on, under the jail. But it's going to go further than that. It's going to reach out to you, Ronnie. Uh -huh. You know, they catch you with a, you, a couple of times. you go to jail for uh -huh. seven years uh -huh. now for little or nothing. That's right. It's like they lock our people up now. I know a young man is in jail right today because of a parking ticket. He's been in jail for damn near a month. He lost his job. Mm -hmm. You know, that don't happen in the other neighborhoods. No. And then when he comes out, what is he going to do? But stick somebody up. Because uh -huh. you took away his job. Yeah, you done took away his right to earn a living. So it goes further than just, well, let's give them more time with the guns and all that. You know, anybody that you get a gun is an illegal gun, do what you got to do. But let's don't make it any different in Chicago than you got it downstate. Just like we don't want it like you got the subsidies for the schools. Right. Because you're taking money. The schools are at a $250 million deficit. If you gave them their money they're supposed to have, they have $500 million that you took from them. Uh -huh. And then you try to act like, you know, that uh, they, they created the problem. You're the ones that's creating the problem. Uh, Commander, I want to see you speak up on that too. Don't just speak up on them guns because you're making me look bad, brother. I was putting it for you and, you know, now they ride me. <laughs> so, you know, you got to do your job, brother. You got to do more than just go down there and say, take these guns. It's more to it. And I applaud that alderman. I don't know who she was. I'm going to try to find out who it was that spoke up and said, let's get these drugs too. That's what they're fighting and killing about over here. These drugs. These drugs. And I want to say this. We got more. We got more uh, positive things in our neighborhood yes, we do. than the law allows. And they try to act like we are the killers and the murderers. No. Hell no, we're not. We're some of the best. Drive in our neighborhoods, you see nice homes and people going that's to school. Right. And do, but they'll pick out the little 3% that's doing the killing and murder and stick you on TV every day, all day, 20 times a day. One of the brothers, and they, they, they don't tell you what you do. And y'all just start doing your own history. I'm talking about you black people, you African Americans. 
you Negroes. Do your own history. Start studying and find out, finding out who you are and what you've done. You've done so much for this country. You have. I looked at, and I know, especially you brothers that, that hang out when you go to the bar and stuff and you're drinking that Jack Daniels. <laughs> Do you know that a black man created that? Do you know that? They've been saying it for years. Jack Daniels finally admitted. Now Harris Green created. He was the one that gave the formula to the Jack Daniels, the largest selling liquor in the world. Black man. But nobody told you that. I hope we got that clip. Can we run that clip on that, on that uh, Jack Daniels? The truth behind Jack Daniels whiskey has finally been revealed after 150 years and it was a slave behind the world famous recipe. Apparently African distilling traditions are what makes the American whiskey so unique. It was always believed that a preacher, grocer and distiller named Dan Call had taught his young apprentice, Jasper Newton Jack Daniel how to run his whiskey still. For years, the history of the American whiskey has been framed as a lily-white affair, centered on German and Scots-Irish settlers who made the alcohol. But now the Tennessee company says Jack Daniel didn't learn distilling from him at all, but from a man named Nearest Green one of called slaves. Jack Daniels is a brand of Tennessee whiskey and the highest selling American whiskey in the world. The New York Times reports that this version of the story was never a secret but is one that the distillery has only recently begun to embrace. It's taken something like the anniversary for us to start to talk about ourselves, said Nelson Eddy, Jack Daniels in-house historian. It is also reported that enslaved men not only made up the bulk of the distilling labor force, but they often played crucial skilled roles in the whiskey making process. In the same way that white cookbook authors often steal recipes from their black cooks, white distillery owners took credit for the whiskey. The bourbon giant says it just wanted to set the record straight. According to a 1967 biography, Jack Daniel's legacy, Call told his slave to teach Daniel everything he knew, quoting, Uncle Nearest is the best whiskey maker that I know of. Slavery ended with 13th Amendment in 1865 and Daniel opened his distillery a year later, employing two of Green's sons. Michael Twitty, a food historian, said that Green would have probably drawn on generations of liquor-making skills American slaves had their own traditions of alcohol production, going back to the corn beer and fruit spirits of West Africa and many Africans made alcohol illegally while in slavery. Fred Manick, the author of Bourbon Curious A Simple Tasting Guide for the Savvy Drinker, concluded, it's extremely sad that these slave distillers will never get the credit they deserve. We likely won't ever even know their names. Founded in 1866 by Jasper Newton, Jack Daniel, America's oldest registered distillery produces every drop of old no. Seven along with Gentleman Jack, Single Barrel, Tennessee Honey, and Tennessee Fire. The Jack Daniels whiskey is sold in more than 165 countries and is still one of the most valuable brands in the world. That's what I'm talking about. Those are some of the things we do. We don't know about it. What I intend to do is have at least one every week because there's so many things that we did in this country we don't know about. Right, and I don't, you, my producer just said, and, and she's absolutely right, we don't need Black History Month. You know, every month, every, every week, every day, we want to remind you of the, the contribution that you made to this country. The contribution that you're making to this country today. I went and saw one of the most beautiful movies I've seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of movies. And that was Hidden Figures. I didn't know all that happened, it was a true story that these, these ladies were that smart and were that instrumental in getting our men to the moon, John Glenn and those guys to the moon. You know, it's just so many things that's going on, folks. They will have you believe that you are low-lifed, 
all you do is shoot and drugs and try to kill each other? No, you don't. When you do great things, a lot of times they don't broadcast it and they don't let you know. I'm talking about the media. They don't let you know. One of the things that we do, Ronnie, we work with infinite scholars, yes, and we, got, we give away more scholarships than the law allow. And they don't broadcast that. Never have. And we had an incident where we were going, we had the scholarships here, and it was a shooting down the street. We were giving away something like $11 million of scholarship at Inglewood That's High right. School. And somebody got shot down the street. The, the, all the cameras left us here, just took off, went down the street to cover the shooting. And I'm like, well, you could have left at least one camera here to talk to these kids that are doing great. All of them are 3.0, you know, and they're going to college and we're getting them scholarships. Oh, that don't mean nothing. We want to see the shooting down here. That's the way it goes, folks. And, and Brother Johnson, you know, keep, up, keep trying to do the work that you're doing. Because I, um, I disagree with what you're doing with this, this, the way that you're going about trying to get the gun thing. But uh, you've done, in my opinion, some good things in trying to bring the community and the police department together. Keep doing that. Keep working on things, and uh, uh, you know, and I, I sympathize with you because you're in between a rock and a hard place. Right. You know, you got the community over here, you got your police over here. It shouldn't be a us against them, and you're trying to make them work as a unit. Right. So it's a good thing. So keep doing that. But on that, uh, on that deal about uh, passing that bill down Springfield, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you, my senator and and my representative, I'm gonna tell you, you better not be voting for that. Not in that form that they're talking about. You better not be voting for that. We'll be watching. We'll be watching. Ronnie, anything else you got to say, brother, um, before we leave? No, just that you mentioned Infinite Scholar. And I wanted to let people know it's been here, what, five years? Five years. This We've year. given something like almost $60 million away in five years. Correct. 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 And it's free. Correct. You know, InfiniteScholar.org. All you got to do is go on the website, the website and look it up. Go on the website and look it up. You'll see what we're talking about. And uh, get your kid educated. Education is the key, and voting is the stamp, y'all. So you have been with Jerry Williams, Runner Roach. Thank you for coming on, brother. Glad to be here. And, Always uh, a pleasure. And uh, next week we're going to have a bunch of politicians. You're going to hear that song again. A bunch of politicians are going to be on, on the show next week. So you want to be here and you want to see that. Again, this is Talk Labor. Keep your head up. Don't be afraid to talk. If you are, come down here. You can say it here. And if you're afraid to say it when you get here, we'll say it for you. We'll say it for you. That's right. We'll see you again on Talk Labor next week. It's time to talk about what's going on in America. It's time to talk about what's going on in the workforce and in the homes of the American middle class. It's time to talk about the status and the future of today's economy. It's time to talk labor with your host, Jerry Williams.